Today we'll be showing you how to do basic BGP config on Juniper. So we'll be doing iBGP for this lab, which means internal border gateway protocol. And the goal for this lab would be for this subnet 192.168.10.0/24 to be able to reach 192.168.20.0/24 situated on this side. So we've got our QFX switch on the right hand side. We've got a QFX switch on the left hand side, aptly named site A and site B. Then we have a site A router and a site B router. So BGP will be formed between these two routers. Don't let these devices over here confuse you. These are just the packet forwarding engines and virtual control planes for the actual devices down here. So just concentrate on this path over here. Just gonna move this one slightly there. So you'll see that the switch is connected to the router. The router interface is GE001 and the switch interface is XE001. Then site B is connected to site A router via GE000 on both sides. And the same happens on this side with the QFX. We've got XE001 on the QFX side and GE001 on the router side. So the switches already have config on. That's not what we're going to be focusing on at the moment. All you need to know is that the side B switch has a subnet configured on it, 192.168.20.0/24, and side A QFX has 192.168.10.0/24. If we just have a look at the config here, show display set no more, you'll see that we only have an IP address and a static route. So the static route points towards the router. The same goes on this side, show display set no more, just a default route pointing towards the router. And this is the interface IP 192.168.20.10. So if we have a look at our router config here, show display set, there's uh, no config here, just the root password and a host name. The same goes for router B and just the password set and the host name. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to configure the interface between the two routers, GE000. And we will just uh, start by assigning an IP address. So we'll do set interfaces GE000.0 for unit zero, family inet address. And we'll make this one 10.10.10.1 slash 30. Then we will also use ISIS to advertise the router's loopbacks to each other. So just set interfaces GE000 unit zero family ISO. And we'll do an interface description as well. So set interfaces GE000 description. We'll just uplink to router B. Just uh, easy enough. Now we need to do the interface config towards the switch, and that is GE001. So we'll just go set interfaces GE001, unit zero family inet address. And for this one, I'm going to make it 192.168.10.1 slash 24 and a description. So set interfaces GE001 description, uplink to switch A. All right, and we can just do a commit. Now we should be able to ping the switch 192.168.10.10 and we are able to. Remember the switch has an IP of 10.10 .10 and a default route of 10.1. So that is why we configured 10.1 on the router. So now we want to configure a Lubeck address. And the reason why you want to use a Lubeck address when it comes to BGP is Usually you'll have multiple interfaces up on the router. And if you use the Lubeck address, it means that you'll have multiple paths towards your BGP neighbor. For instance, if you configure the interface IP as your BGP neighbor and that interface has to go down, then your BGP will go down as well. Whereas if you configure it towards a Lubeck address, if you've got two or more links connected to your router, one link can go down and the Lubeck should still be accessible via the IGP, which in this case is ISIS. So I will start with set interfaces allo 0, 0.0 and we'll configure family INET address. I'm just gonna make this one 172.16.0.1/32. And then we also need to configure a family ISO address for it to be able to participate in ISIS. So set interfaces allo 0.0 family ISO address. Now we're gonna take 
this 172.16.0.1 address and we're going to modify it so that it fits into the ISO address format. So first off you start with your area ID so 49.0001 then we're going to take that Lubac address I'm going to make it 172.0016.0001 and just .00 at the end. So here you can see instead of having three numbers before each dot or three possible numbers here you have four possible numbers before each dot but there are only three octets instead of four octets so this is just uh, an easy way to identify what root of this actually is this can be any number as long as it's unique within your network it's just a lot easier to just take the Lubeck address modify it a little bit so that it looks like this right so then we're going to go into edit protocols isis we are going to make our uplink interfaces part of ISIS. So in this case, it is GE000. So set interfaces GE000.0. And we are just going to level one disable because for this lab, I only want to use level two. Now we also need to advertise the Lubac address via ISIS, but we don't want the Lubac to participate in any routing decisions. So we're going to make the Lubac as a passive interface. You do that by set interfaces LO0.0 passive. There you just do a show. So there we have our uplink towards router B, level one disable and passive on the Lubac interface. All right, we can go ahead and commit this as well. Now we can just do a show pipe display set pipe no more. And here is our full config. That This will just be for uplink towards the router, uplink towards the switch and our ISIS config. So what you can actually do now is you can just copy this and you can paste it into notepad. Sorry, my notepad text might be a little bit small, but now you can just change this a little bit and adapt it so that it works for site router B. So in this case, I'm just going to make this one dot two. I'm going to make this one 20.1. Remember, because we have 20 configured on this side, right? Then we will change the Lubac address to dot two as well, because your Lubac address needs to be unique within your network. We'll make that one dot two as well. And that pretty much should be it. Now we just change the descriptions. So this will be uplink to router A, uplink to switch B. Then you can just take this config, copy it, go back to your router B, and you can basically just uh, paste it in here. We can do a commit and everything should be fine. Now you just want to make sure that your ISIS is up and running before you continue with your BGP config. So let's do a run show ISIS adjacency. You can see that our level two is up because we've disabled level one and the same should be true for this site. Run show ISIS adjacency. All right, so it is up towards system site B router and it's level two on this interface and the whole timer will expire in 21 seconds. The whole timer will automatically renew, so you don't have to worry about that. And now if we do a run show route, we should see the Lubeck addresses being advertised by ISIS. So 172.16.0.2 is a router B's Lubeck and you can see that we are learning it via ISIS and we are going to send it to 10.10.10.2 via this interface, which is correct if you look at our drawing via this interface towards this router. That's where the Lubeck 172.16.0.2 resides. Right now we need to do our BGP config. So we are just going to go into edit protocols BGP. Now we're going to give the group a name. You configure your BGP in groups just to make it easier. And we are just going to name it IBGP. All right, if you do a show, there's nothing in here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to specify the type, whether it's internal or external. We're going to use IBGP or internal border gateway protocol. So we are just going to set type internal. So IBGP is used when it's within an AS. We are going to use a private AS of 65535 and all BGP neighbors within that AS, that private AS would be IBGP. The moment you need to communicate with a public AS or any external AS, 
that would mean that you would start using eBGP or external border gateway protocol. So then we are going to set our local interface. This is the interface IP from which the BGP session would be initiated. So set local, not set local address. 172.16.0.1. Remember, we're going to build the BGP sessions between the Lubeck addresses as explained earlier. So we're going to specify the Lubeck here. Then we are going to specify the neighbor, and that would be our remote router's Lubeck address as well. 172.16.0.2. And in here, we are just going to specify our local AS as well. Oh, set local AS and 65535. So there's a list of available private ASs and public ASs. So I'll put a link in the description below just so you can see what ranges you can use for your private AS. The private AS does not need to be unique. Multiple service providers across the world can have the same private AS as private ASs never communicate between each other. Right now we can just do a show and that is pretty much all that we need for IBGP. So we can do a show pipe display set. We can take this config again, copy, go back into my notepad here. And we can just change these numbers around. And you can copy and paste it again to go back to site router B. You can paste it here and do a commit. So all we've done is just the reverse from what we've done on site A. So you can see that the local address now has changed to dot two and the remote address has changed to dot one. So BGP takes a little while to come up, but you can verify your connection by doing a show, run show BGP summary. And here you can see that it is up. It's been up for 10 seconds, but we are not learning any routes from our peer. The same would be true on this side. If we do a run show BGP summary, you can see that there's zero routes being learned. Now, as explained earlier, what we want to do is we want to advertise 192.168.10.0/24 to this router so that these two subnets will be able to communicate. And that means that we would need to advertise 192.168.20.0 as well towards site A. And to do that, you would need to configure important export policies. So we'll just go top, we'll do a run show route again. I just want to show you this is uh, very important. So you'll see that the route that we want to advertise to site B is 192.168.10.0/24, and it is directly connected. Okay, this means that it is on this interface. This IP is configured on this interface here, 10.1. So 10.0/24 is a directly connected network. Now that is important to note because that is how you're going to structure your policies. So you can just go into top edit policy options, policy statement, and I'm just going to name this one IBGP dash export because we are exporting this route via BGP to the other router. All right now we are going to set our terms for this policy. So we are going to say set from protocol direct. Remember, this is a direct route. Okay, you can press enter and you can say set from root filter 192.168.10.0 slash 24 exact. All right, so that means that this exact route needs to be in this router's routing table and it needs to be directly connected before it'll be exported via BGP. All right, we can just go ahead. And we can do a show pipe compare just to verify everything. So from protocol direct root filter, one on two say 10.0 slash 24 exact. Right, we're going to do a commit here. Now, if we go to site router B and we do a run show BGP summary, we are still not getting any routes. Right, so the reason for that is that you would actually need to reference this policy in your BGP config. So to do that, we go top edit protocols, BGP group, IBGP, just do a show. So we say set export because this is an export policy and you can just have it autocomplete. Set export, IBGP export. All right. So if we do a commit now, we can go back to site to B and we should start seeing routes being advertised here, but we don't. All right. So the reason for that is you need to set a then statement. 
All right. So if we go into back into policy options here, so top edit policy options, policy statement, IBGP export. All right, we do a show, even though we say from protocol direct and this root filter exact, it does not know what to do with this information. And then we can just say set, then accept. All right, we do a show. Now we've got the then accept statement, do a top and a commit. Now, if we go here, now this should work. So now you can see we are learning one root. So to verify what root we are learning, you can just do a run show root receive protocol BGP and you type in the neighbor's IP address 172.16.0.1. And it's showing you that it is advertising 192.168.10.0 slash 24. So if we go back to our QFX here, if we now try and run ping 192.168.20.10, it's not working, right? So the reason for that is we still need this subnet to be advertised to this router over here. Site B is now aware of the subnet over here, but site A router is not aware of site B's subnet. So we're going to do exactly the same with the export policies. We can once again, just do a copy and paste. So we do top edit, not protocols, policy options. We can do a show display set, and we can copy and paste this into notepad once again. And we just change this to 20.0. All right. And we go, yeah, we can paste it here and do a commit. Now it's still not going to work. We still need to go into top edit uh, protocols, BGP group, IBGP, and we need to set this as an export policy. So set export IBGP, and we do a commit. So if we go back here, we can do a run show BGP summary, and we are receiving one root, and we can do a run show root receive protocol BGP and type in 172.16.0.2, which is this peer. All right. And you can see that we are learning 192.168.20.0 slash 24. And the next stop is site router B. So if we go back to the QFX now, we just rerun this command and now everything is working. We can try and just do the same on this side. So we do a run ping 192.168.10.10 and it is working. Now, to be fair, this is not a typical scenario where you would use BGP. I just wanted to show you the basics of BGP because we are going to do some more advanced BGP videos very, very soon where we will start doing MPLS and layer two and layer three. VPNs, and for that you would need a basic understanding of BGP. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, I hope to see you guys in the next one.